Please, Please direct, direct your attention, attention to our joint service, Air Force and Army ROTC Color Guard, and join us in the singing of our national anthem. Thank you, Redefined, for your wonderful musical contribution this morning. Good morning. I'm Sarah Mengelsdorf, Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. On behalf of the faculty and staff on stage with me, as well as those many of those across campus here on the floor, it is my pleasure to welcome you here to Wisconsin. Whether you are a transfer student or a freshman, you are now officially a Badger. Welcome. As provost, I work with the deans and directors of all the schools and colleges to ensure that we are offering academic programs and an overall educational experience that is second to none. Our faculty pride themselves on a deep commitment to undergraduate, graduate, and professional education. I am very proud of the hard work and effort put forth by each and every faculty and staff member here on our campus. Convocation is the beginning of your college experience here in Madison, and it's the only time until graduation that you will be in an academic assembly with so many of your classmates. Convocation is so important that it was once a weekly event here. Back in 1899, at the start of the academic year, someone decided it would be great to hold weekly mandatory convocations featuring lectures on various topics like the history of civilization. I know you'll find this hard to believe, but the students gradually stopped showing up, despite the fact it was mandatory, don't know quite how that worked, and convocation ultimately became just an annual event, and you can be thankful for that, even though I'm glad you're here today. The formal attire of academia you see us wearing today is one of the oldest traditions in higher education, drawing from customs that originated when the first universities were founded more than 600 years ago. The robes and hoods and the unique colors they feature are symbolic of academic communities. They also 
represent a link to your future. This ceremony of convocation serves as a formal beginning of your student academic experience, which will end with commencement, the next time you are likely to see all of us in this attire. You will be wearing your own regalia at Camp Randall for your graduation from UW-Madison, and we will be celebrating all that you have learned and created and what ideas you will push forward. At this time, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to the members of our official platform party. I'm going to ask each of them to stand up when their name is called and remain standing. And I'll ask you in the audience to please hold your applause until all members of the party have been introduced. Steve Hahn, Vice Provost for Enrollment Management. You didn't follow directions. You're supposed to be holding your applause. Kristen Roman, Chief of Police. Lauren Heller, Vice Chancellor for Finance and Administration. Steve Ackerman, Associate Vice Chancellor for Research in the Physical Sciences. Raymond Tafora, Vice Chancellor for Legal Affairs. Charles Hoslett, Vice Chancellor for University Relations. Elizabeth Petty, Senior Associate Dean for Academic Affairs of the School of Medicine and Public Health. Jeffrey Russell, Vice Provost for Lifelong Learning and Dean of Continuing Studies. Steve Swanson, Dean of the School of Pharmacy. Mark Markell, Dean of the School of Veterinary Medicine. Linda Scott, Dean of the School of Nursing. Diana Hess, Dean of the School of Education. Carl Schultz, Dean of the College of Letters and Science. Roberta Hill, Professor of English and American Indian Studies and Director of the American Indian Studies Program. Shanti Kumbala, Senior and our student speaker today. Rebecca Blank, Chancellor. Patrick Sims, Vice Provost for Diversity and Climate and Chief Diversity Officer. Sarah Fodiker, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs of the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. Soyan Shim, Dean of the School of Human Ecology. Ian Robertson, Dean of the College of Engineering. Ann Massey, Dean of the Wisconsin School of Business. William Karpis, Dean of the Graduate School. Margaret Raymond, Dean of the Law School. Guido Podesta, Vice Provost and Dean of the International Division. John Baldacchino, Director of the Arts Institute. Paul Robbins, Director of the Nelson Institute for Environmental Studies. Michael Lehman, Interim Chief Information Officer. Lori Berkwam, Vice Provost for Student Life and Dean of Students. Ed Van Gemmert, Vice Provost for Libraries and University Librarian. Stephen Kramer, Vice Provost for Teaching and Learning. Sarah Schutt, Chief Alumni Officer and Executive Director of the Wisconsin Alumni Association. Faculty and academic staff who lead and support the educational mission of the university are also in attendance today. Please stand and be recognized. Now you can all applaud. I would now like to introduce Rebecca Blank, Chancellor of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Chancellor Blank is an internationally respected economist who has worked in three different presidential administrations, most recently as Deputy Secretary and Acting Secretary of the U.S. Department of Commerce under President Obama. She received her undergraduate degree in economics from the University of Minnesota and holds a doctoral deg degree from MIT. She has served on the faculty of Princeton, Northwestern, and the University of Michigan, where she was dean of the Ford School of Public Policy. There are lots of reasons she loves being here at UW-Madison. 
Chief among them are seeing the way our students engage in learning beyond the classroom, the breadth of our curriculum on campus where we literally teach everything from Arabic to Zulu, the fact that public service and the Wisconsin idea are woven into nearly every aspect of what we do, and of course, she loves game days with Bucky, the Union Terrace, and any Babcock ice cream flavor containing chocolate. Please give a warm welcome for Chancellor Rebecca Blank. Good morning, all the new Badgers. Welcome. It's great to see you all here. Welcome to the University of Wisconsin in Madison, one of the top 25 universities in the world. This is a special year. Most incoming classes go through convocation before their first Badger game, but the energy and the excitement of a game day in Madison is a pretty perfect way to kick off your life as a Badger. This year is special for a few other reasons as well. First, the 2017 freshman class is the largest in US Madison history. And we have a sizable cohort of transfers as well. So it is great to see everyone here in the Cole Center. You were selected from a record-breaking pool of applicants, more than 35,000 students for 6,600 slots. We selected you. You're here because you're highly qualified academically and because we believe that your talents and your interests make you an excellent fit for this great university. Every one of you should be feeling proud. So congratulations again for being here. Now, I've seen all of you around campus taking a lot of photos, so it's my turn now. This is going to be your first class photo. So, everybody smile. All right. Now, just a minute, I've got to turn around. There we go. All right, everyone smile. You got it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be tweeting that from my account. And if you want to see it, You'll follow me at, at Becky Blank. <laughs> Not that I'm marketing. I know that many of you are already on Instagram with us, and we love to see what you're up to. So keep posting, and be sure to check out the hashtag you at UW. It's five student bloggers who are talking about pretty much everything that's on your mind as a new Badger. So let me tell you a little bit about the people sitting next to you in the Cole Center. You come from 43 different states and from 47 countries. Well over half of you are from the great state of Wisconsin. And I'm very proud to say, Wisconsin rules. <laughs> I'm very proud to say that nearly two in 10 of our new freshmen and three in 10 of our new transfer students are the very first in their generation in their family to go to college. So special congratulations to the first generation students and welcome to them. <laughs> Studying at a major research institution is an extraordinary experience. You're going to learn from world-renowned faculty. You'll have opportunities to participate in groundbreaking research, to collaborate with students and faculty from around the world on major class projects. And you can choose from among 134 majors and 58 different languages. As a place, this can sometimes feel a little overwhelming when you first arrive. So let me exercise my privilege as chancellor to give you three pieces of advice. First of all, your primary reason to be here at UW is to learn, to be a student. So take your academic work seriously. This is and can be a challenging place. The classes are rigorous, and you're going to need to keep up with the readings and to do the homework. Don't wait till Thanksgiving break to catch up on your classes. Special warning, the students who get in the most academic trouble in their first year are those who party too much. There's a strong correlation between high-risk drinking and academic failure, particularly for freshmen. So please be aware of your limitations 
take care of your health, and be smart about your behavior. Secondly, get involved in activities outside the classroom. It's the best way to make friends and to become part of this community. There are 940 student organizations on this campus and lots of other opportunities, like Badger volunteers who work together on all sorts of community projects. Getting involved is not only good for your social life, it's also an important part of your education here. You will learn as much from your fellow students as you do from your teachers. So put down your phone. I promise you it'll be there when you get back. Get off YouTube and do something fun with other people, especially on Sunday nights, when I know many of you are going to have some extra time on your hands. I want you to know that staying active is the key to getting through Game of Thrones withdrawal. My third piece of advice, like many of you, I'm from right here in the upper Midwest. I grew up in Minnesota, in the Twin Cities. I learned, I know there's some of you here. <laughs> I learned from my family that I should take care of my own problems and not bother other people with them. Does that sound familiar to any of you? It really wasn't the best thing to learn. Just because you can do things on your own doesn't mean you should. The faculty, staff, and advisors are here to work with you and to help you. So if things aren't going quite the way that you want them to, please don't hesitate to reach out. Let me tell you about one of our senior class officers named Martin Weiss, who graduated last May. At commencement, Martin was our student speaker, and he told the story of arriving on this campus not knowing a soul and worrying about whether he'd made the right choice to come to UW. He talked about the challenges he faced when his father died unexpectedly, and he realized he'd have to do something he had never done before. He had to ask for help. Martin found that when he turned to friends and classmates and fraternity brothers and advisors, that every one of them had his back. And not only that, but his willingness to share about what was happening in his life helped them open up as well about all the things they were dealing with that he knew nothing about. Of course, not all problems are quite that big. Maybe your toughest issue this week is figuring out if it's possible to get from Steenbach Hall to Van Weiss Hall in under seven minutes. And the answer is yes, but it's slightly uphill, so be prepared to work up a sweat. Or, this is even worse, picking a food cart on Library Mall. That is a tough decision, but I can tell you I've tried them all and you can't go wrong. The main point here is, you're not alone. Everyone has questions and problems, big and small, and we succeed with the help of those around us. We picked you because we want you to be here as a student. We know you can succeed, and if you hit snags, we want to help. That's what it means to be part of a community. But great communities don't just happen. They do take work, and you have to get to know each other and get to know yourselves better. For many of you, this is the first time you've lived with people from very different communities, some who look differently, speak differently, or think about the world in different ways than you do. If you're like the rest of us, you're probably a little more comfortable with people whose names and faces and languages are like your own. It's always just a little too easy to hang out with that group. But in 2017, and this is a piece of career advice that I mean very strongly, one of the most important skills you will ever learn for your future career is how to live and work effectively in a diverse and a global community. So it's our job to help you mix it up. You'll take part in the Our Wisconsin program to help you recognize and challenge some of the assumptions you don't even realize that you make about other people. And we'll do our best to get you out and involved in lots of other events and activities, and maybe even occasionally push you a bit beyond your comfort zone. One way we all hope to connect as a community is by reading and talking about this fall's Go Big Read book. It's called Hillbilly Elegy, and you receive a copy when you leave the Cole Center today. Go Big Read is basically the biggest book club you've ever been in. Thousands of people on campus and around the Madison community are going to be reading this book this fall. Your professors might incorporate it into some class discussions and we'll have a big campus community conversation about it in October. Hillbilly Elegy 
is about poverty and about people who have lost hope. It's about the social, economic, and political forces that shape places like the Ohio Steel Town and the Appalachian community in Kentucky where the author grew up. Many of the topics that this book talks about reflect some of the forces that have been dividing this nation so deeply. Those divides surface in many ways. I know that the scenes from Charlottesville last month, the images of the KKK and Nazi flags are deeply disturbing and they are absolutely antithetical to everything that this campus represents. Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, once said he recognized when he was in college that he wanted to be involved in things that would change the world. I know that many of you feel the same. That's why you chose a university with a long tradition of engagement in the world. Our students care deeply about the things that affect people's lives, and we're not afraid of robust debate that allows for many points of view, even those that are contrary to our values. We are a public university, and we have on this campus many public spaces. That is what free expression is about. But we will not tolerate threats or violence. So I want to close my remarks today by reaffirming this campus's commitment to providing an environment that is safe for the teaching, the learning, the research, and the public service that is central to who we are as a community. We value diversity. We welcome everyone who wants to learn, to work hard, and to be part of this wonderful community. Let me sum up my advice today using the words of that wonderful philosopher, Dr. Seuss. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you are the one who will decide where you go. Despite all your different backgrounds, everyone in this room now shares a common identity as Badgers, one that I hope you're going to claim for the rest of your lives. You are students and will one day be alumni of one of the greatest universities in the world. Congratulations on being here at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, and my very best wishes for your time here as a student. On Wisconsin. One of our traditions at Convocation is to welcome a, on behalf of someone on behalf of, the Wisconsin, of Wisconsin's First Nations. Some of you might know the University of Wisconsin sits on the ancestral lands of the Ho-Chunk Nation. Professor Roberta Hill will offer this year's welcome. Professor Hill is a member of the Oneida Nation, an award-winning poet, fiction writer, and a scholar who directs our American Indian Studies program. Professor Hill, thank you for being here today. I'd like to thank Chancellor Blank for this opportunity and Richard Slaughter, the director of the Geology Museum, who shared his knowledge with me. Hojo, Ani, Aho, Uju, Segoli. These words are greetings in Menominee, Ojibwe, Ho Chunk, Potawatomi, and Oneida. The land on which our campus sits is part of the homeland of the Ho-Chunk Nation, who called this area, with its four lakes, Dejob. I'm Oneida. The Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Oneida, and Mohawk established a confederacy and identified themselves as Haudenosaunee, the people of the Longhouse the longhouse symbolizing the five nations living under one roof, related to each other and to the natural world. 
The idea that people from diverse backgrounds have the capacity to reason, discuss, create, and value their different perspectives is a cornerstone of our democracy and of this university. As Badgers, you now belong to this community. I want to share with you a little about the geology of Wisconsin and the Native nations with reservations and communities within this state. Dejope may be familiar because of the Dejope Residence Hall, which the Ho-Chunk Nation named. Inside it are the tribal seals of 11 sovereign Native nations of Wisconsin. 500 million years ago, Wisconsin was a shallow tropical sea near the equator the Baraboo Hills were islands in that sea. Wisconsin slowly moved north. 20,000 years ago, Deschamps was underneath a quarter mile thick glacier. When the glacier melted, it left drumlins, long pointed hills of rock. Bascom Hill is a drumlin. The water receded and the Yahara River creates four lakes, Kiganza and Wabesa, south of Madison, and Monona and Mendota on either side of the isthmus. Paleo-Indians hunted mastodons and mammoths. To see the size of a mastodon, visit the Geology Museum and see the mastodon exhibit Moving closer in time to the present, yet before European contact, the Sac, Meskwaki, and Ho-Chunk nations heavily populated Dejo. So this area has many archeological sites. Take the tour to see the mounds, the uh, water panther effigy, and the tree of peace, and the burr oaks along the lake. It's important for you to know that Wisconsin has more native nations than any other state east of the Mississippi. Thanks to the Wisconsin State Historical Society archives, I'd like to show you a few photos from 70 to 100 years ago when times were tough. In this photo, a Ho-Chunk woman shucks corn. Native agriculturalists domesticated corn thousands of years ago. The Maya worshipped Yum Kash, the youthful male corn god, an image of life, light, and consciousness. Corn is sacred. The plants sustain all life so they are sacred. Native nations throughout the hemisphere believe human life depends upon the vitality of the natural world. This photo is the Odena Fair at Bad River Reservation in 1915. The Ojibwe belonged to one of the largest Indian nations north of Mexico with territories from the eastern shore of Lake Huron to as far west as Montana. Wisconsin has six Ojibwe reservations across the northern third of the state. Fairs and celebrations were important because in the 19th and 20th centuries, depending on the reservation, Indian people were forbidden to visit each other the Menominee Reservation is close to the people's origin. Even today, they are trying to stop their origin sites from being contaminated. In this 1933 photo, Menominee men work to save their white pine from blister rust. The Menominee have protected their forest 
and their management practices are world-renowned. Their entire reservation is a forest. To them, a stand of trees is not a forest. The Potawatomi's original homelands were in the northern third of Lower Michigan. As encroachment, colonization, and warfare occurred, they moved to Wisconsin. In this photo from 1921, a moccasin game is going on, with two sides guessing, bluffing, in a team spirit, much like you will have. The game is a time to enjoy banter and singing. In 1922, a group of Oneida, along with Stockbridge Muncie, or Mohican, and Brotherton, migrated from New York due to colonization and warfare. They did not give up the idea that they would return. Stockbridge Muncie, or Mohican, and Brotherton are Algonquin speakers whose original territory is along the East Coast. I could not find a photograph of the Mohican, but here is a photograph of Brotherton lumberjacks. Many Indian men throughout Wisconsin worked as lumberjacks, and Indian women were employed as cooks. The forests of northern Wisconsin were felled, so the old forests are gone. In 1915, settlers watched and celebrated the felling of a 500-year-old tree on my reservation. In this 1910 photo, children learn English at the small uh, federal government boarding school where students were forbidden to speak Oneida. In the 1970s, our people established the current tribal school with the goal of teaching the Oneida language. There are many ways to greet one another and instead of saying, how are you, we might ask each other, skanagoka, which means, are you living in the great peace? And we answer, skanago, yes, I live in the great peace. As you can see, 70 to 100 years ago, people lived differently. They faced challenges and survived. They valued their lands and remembered who they were. They imagined themselves as holding knowledge that is important for the future generations. As you can see, those values of family, community, dedication to work and land have not changed. The Dejot region is a rich history of people living in community of innovation, of resistance. Native medicines and crops changed the world and established enabled population growth. Corn, beans, squash, chili peppers, tobacco, tomatoes, chewing gum, rubber, and cotton come from the indigenous people of this hemisphere. As Badgers, we are proud to carry forth this tradition by continuing to develop the products and ideas that will change the world by imagining ourselves and the natural world as rich in possibility. Step proudly as Badgers into this tradition. Be curious about where we are and as a community where we've been and where we're going. Seek out the history that is all around you. You are citizens of a democracy that needs your active engagement, your active effort to use your good minds to meet the opportunities ahead. Ask one another, as I now ask you, Skanagoka. Ah. 
Are you part of the great peace? Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. It's my pleasure to now introduce our student speaker, Shanti Kumbala, a senior from Orland Park, Illinois, is a very active student, involved in a variety of activities on campus and off. She remembers her first few days of classes here, feeling uneasy, how she would ever get to know people, and feeling overwhelmed by how much there was to do and see. And I can imagine some of you might be feeling that these days, too. But it didn't take her long to find communities in extracurricular activities, class discussions, her residence hall. Strangers quickly became some of her closest friends. She says her favorite part of UW-Madison is getting to meet so many kind and talented people. All around campus, Shanti is majoring in molecular biology with certificates in German, global health, and leadership. She enjoys studying and spending time with friends at the Union. Please welcome. Join me in welcoming Shanti Kamal. Look around and take in everything you can sense. In the moment, you are in a massive arena surrounded by thousands of people in a city filled to the brim with action and adventure. It might just seem like a scene from a college campus, but it's actually the setting to your latest story, the story of your Wisconsin experience. Now that you're all moved in, you have the first few paragraphs written, and it seems like all you have left to do is to just keep on writing until you're finished, as you take classes, join clubs, and soak in everything that UW-Madison has to offer. Seems like a straightforward little checklist, right? Not exactly. Remember that this is college, where every day brings a new plot twist. When I was sitting in your spot a few years ago, I was nervous. Nervous that I would burn myself out, that I wouldn't figure out what I wanted to do with my life, and that I would let my family down. I decided that I would just pick a major and go with it. It was a simple plan that I had mustered up, so maybe, just maybe, I could safeguard myself from making the wrong moves in the years ahead. Fast forward to sophomore year, and after sticking to the plan for a couple of semesters, I found myself at a crossroad in a tale of two courses. A chemistry course, where lectures were laid back and easy to follow, and a biology course, which was packed with an immense amount of material that left my head spinning after each lecture. You might have expected that I didn't enjoy my biology class too much, but here's where the real plot twist begins. Instead of muddling in the mysteries that my biology class presented to me, I instead chose to sit and spend time piecing together its puzzles, and I genuinely enjoyed what I learned. However, as the semester continued, it became evident that I needed to spend a lot more time with chemistry if I wanted my original master plan to pan out smoothly and successfully. Though biology was an important part of my main plan, my success in chemistry was critical. However, I always ended up pouring my time and efforts into biology, and my interest for that class only grew stronger. I soon questioned that if I was willing to pour myself into a class that led to long nights of studying and pushed me to my limits, then where was my heart really at? I mean, I liked what I learned, what I liked what I learned, I liked what I was learning in chemistry, but I loved what I was learning in biology. At that point, I decided that my original ironclad plan was no longer what I wanted. I decided to change my major and I changed my career goals. I let myself take a chance on the fears that I once let define my college experience and what happened next made all the difference. I didn't just do work for my classes, but I sat down to learn. My degree plan stopped being a checklist and it became my education. And this newfound sense of exploration followed me outside the classroom as well from becoming a tutor to a house fellow, from volunteering at the hospital to working in a lab, from, con from connecting with my communities in Madison to communities beyond. Changing majors is not uncommon, and this experience can happen to anyone in any field. However, 
this experience was a change within myself that I initially didn't want to acknowledge, and it was a change within myself that I didn't expect. But instead of letting this unexpected change hold me back, I let it push me forward, and I learned to trust myself in the process. Yet the unexpected moments in life don't have to be life-changing, but you don't have to take my word for it. I'm going to stand here for the next 10 seconds, and meanwhile, I would like for everyone to turn to the person in front of you or behind you, give them a high five, and talk to them. It could be a compliment, tell them a joke, introduce yourselves, just have fun with it. So go for it. Congrats, you just unexpectedly made a difference in someone's life in just a few seconds. Whether it was talking to someone you didn't know or not knowing what to say, you put yourself out there and hopefully made someone smile in the process. This was just a small exercise to show that some moments take an unexpected twist, but they can still be positive, impactful, and sometimes even better than what you had expected. After all I've shared with you, I'm not going to tell you to expect the unexpected. I'm telling you to embrace it. The days ahead for you at UW will be teeming with new experiences at every corner, and many of them will be vastly different than what you anticipated. Your classes won't just push you to know the material, but to understand it. Simply working a job is one thing, but making meaningful connections and engaging with the community will take effort and heart on your part. And although our differences might seem to separate us, when we start listening to each other, instead of only hearing our words, our diversity can only bind us. You are here at UW because you have something unique to contribute to the community, from your talents, to your passions, to your commitment to excellence. When we embrace what we never saw coming, our limits become our stepping stones. Change is no longer our enemy, rather, it is our opportunity to become someone greater than who we were the day before. Remember, this is your story. Everything you get out of this experience completely depends on what you put into it. In the end, you are Badgers and you belong here. I am grateful to be the person I am today because of the whirlwind of experiences that UW-Madison has given me. And I hope that your time here at UW sweeps you off your feet and inspires you so you can inspire those around you. Thank you for letting me be a small part of your first steps forward in the story of your Wisconsin experience. Best of luck and welcome home, Badgers. Thank you. Thank you, Shanti. Those were great remarks. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Patrick Sims, Vice Provost and Chief Diversity Officer. He combines his passions of theater, diversity, and arts education in his various roles on campus including serving as a professor in the Department of Theater and Drama. Sims has been leading our diversity efforts on campus for four years, and his outreach programs have been featured at the National Conference on Race and Ethnicity and the Diversity Summit at Yale University. In his role as Vice Provost and Chief Diversity Officer in the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Educational Achievement. Can we get a shorter title? Um, Patrick also guides the work of programs such as Posse, People, First Wave, Chancellor Scholars, Power Snap Scholars programs, as well as the Center for Educational Opportunity, which impacts some 1,500 students' lives. His division also includes the Office of Equity and Diversity and the Learning Communities for Institutional Change and Excellence. Please join me in welcoming Vice Provost and Chief Diversity Officer, Patrick Sims.
How's everybody doing today? Oh, thank you. Y'all kind of left the chancellor hanging when she asked how you all were doing. You kind of, eh. But thank you for responding, and thank you, uh, Provost Mangledorf, for that wonderful introduction. I also want to extend a sincere welcome to each and every one of you. You are Badgers, yes? Yes. Today, I'd like to take a moment to talk about our diversity at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and share with you why I think diversity is a source of strength for us. Uh, a few years ago, I began an effort um, to craft a campus statement. And I wanted this not just to be my statement or the chancellor's statement or the provost's statement, but we really wanted it to be the campus statement. The process of adopting an institutional statement on diversity for UW-Madison began in early spring 2016 when I started working with the university's four shared governance groups. You don't know much about shared governance yet, but you all are represented by the Associated Students of Madison, which is the student arm of our governance process. The goal was to establish a singular vision that galvanizes our collective efforts related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. I want to thank everyone involved in this effort and for all of their hard work and collaboration. It's my pleasure to share with you today the final version of our institutional statement about our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. But I want to reinforce something. The statement doesn't mean a whole lot if we don't breathe life into it, all right? So part of what I want to challenge you is to think about how you can help bring this statement to fruition. And it reads, diversity is a source of strength, creativity, and innovation for the UW-Madison. We value the contribution of each person and respect the profound ways their identity, culture, background, experience, status, ability, and opinions enrich the university community. We commit ourselves to the pursuit of excellence in teaching, research, outreach, and diversity as inextricably linked goals. The University of Wisconsin-Madison fulfills this public mission by creating a welcoming and inclusive community from people from every background people who as students, faculty, and staff who serve Wisconsin and the world. That is our statement, folks. Round of applause for our statement. I am pleased that we have affirmed what has always been an unwavering commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion as part of our core values and the standards of excellence that is synonymous with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So what is my ask of you today? How can you make this statement come alive? While you are here, I ask that you engage with students who have different backgrounds and experiences than your own. Seek to learn something about them as a way of understanding more about yourself. I've often found that when I'm genuinely curious and excited to learn someone or something new, that process of discovery and how I engage it says more about me than the thing or the person I'm trying to get to know. This will strengthen your work on our campus experience. College should be a learning process that promotes the values of inclusive excellence in community, workplace, and educational settings. I also want to encourage you to be brave enough to embrace new and exciting ideas, topics or sensitive subject matters that demand a greater social awareness, like race relations, gender, power, privilege, sexual orientation, these ideas lack meaningful discourse due to their polarizing nature and or historical legacies. I want to encourage you to find a way to have a conversation about them. Discover where you are and how you critically think and engage these issues. I want, to I want you to learn from your professors, but also learn from each other. Over the years, as a faculty member, I've learned so much from the students. Lastly, I want to encourage you to maintain your passion and sense of curiosity, for they will ensure that this university continues to deliver cutting-edge research and curricula for a world-class student experience. Remember, as faculty, we're on your team. We want you to succeed during your time on campus. So take advantage of those office hours and get to know your professors. Believe it or not, they actually want to get to know you. And dare I say, they even care about you and your success. Now, I ask that you please turn your attention to the video which highlights how current faculty view their role on campus in connecting with first-year first students. Thank you. 
Fall is always an amazing time of year. We have new students coming in and they bring great energy and spirit. Here you have a great number of young people who are about to embark on the greatest adventure of their life so far. We're here to challenge them, to excite them about asking more and better questions. And what's there not to love about that? It's pretty exciting to have everybody back on campus and ready for classes. Well, I always get a little bit nervous the first day of class. You're walking into this room with uh, 80 to 100 students and they're all looking at you. Um, but once you get in there, you can kind of feel the excitement and the enthusiasm. They're, they're a little nervous too. Um, it's their first day in a college class. I get stage fright. I do. I get butterflies. It's as though I'm, I'm going on stage, even though I've been teaching for almost 30 years. So one of the favorite moments I have during the semester is the very first day. I teach hundreds of students, and I sit there, and I sip my cup of coffee, and I watch them drift in, they settle in, and I love the scene because they don't know, as they're taking their seats, just how much they're going to learn in one semester. Like they need to buckle up and go for the fun ride because it is going to be a blast. Any professor who's paying attention uh, really learns from the students as the students learn from them. And the truth is that, at least personally, some of my best friends in the world are former professors of mine and former students of mine. There are a lot of opportunities to interact and to learn from each other, and that's the exciting part about college. It's not a one-way street. Everybody benefits from this. I teach because I like students. It's fun and exciting, and it's very stimulating for me. And so most faculty are really willing to go that extra mile and to, and to have conversations with students and to help them. I think that the students really need to take ownership for their education and be able to go out there and ask for help when they need help. They're going to be in a competitive environment with lots of smart people and they have to overcome their reluctance to reach out for help and if they ask they'll get the help. You don't have Big Brother looking over your shoulder all the time uh, to find out where you are and whether you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and so that's now up to you. You really do have to you know, stay on top of what is necessary. Um, how am I going to succeed in this class? And that's also a very good uh, question to ask during an office hour. I want to succeed in this class, what advice would you give me? I think some students, especially first year students, may feel intimidated about going to the professor's office. But we sit there waiting for students to come by. So the student that comes in when they start to, to see that they're having troubles is really the student that is most impressive because it's the student that monitors their own learning in a way to uh, get the help that they need and get where they want to be at the end of the semester. This is a great opportunity to find a mentor or many mentors and establish relationships with people that will help you beyond a letter of reference or helping you with, with schoolwork. We have high expectations for students and students are here because we know that they can meet them and we're here to work with them. Sometimes the workload can seem a little overwhelming at times but faculty aren't going to give students things that they can't handle. They're going to give them the things that are going to push them and keep them motivated not only through a semester but through an academic career and then beyond. I like to always try to get my students to realize that what we're working on in that classroom every single day is to give them tools to prepare them for what's on the other side of graduation. There is nothing more exciting than seeing the light bulbs go on and somebody just learned something and being able to facilitate that it's what I live for. It's really fun. Uh, it's really what teaching is all about. You know, we're here to challenge students, but we're also here to lift them up to meet that challenge. So we can do both. We're not going to go easy on anyone, but at the same time, we want people to succeed and we want to contribute to their success. That's what we take pride in. I want students to have serious fun. I want them to take their work seriously, take themselves seriously and realize that they're here kind of on a mission. Embrace all of college experience and um, make sure you're achieving a balance but, but really do understand that you are here at UW to learn a lot of things inside and outside the classroom and embrace every bit of it. Explore, be free, um, you know, cut loose and for parents um, stay out of their way. The person that you are today is not going to be the person that you are four years from now. And it's an honor and a privilege, I think, as a faculty member to help students find themselves and to grow in that way. You're starting fresh. 
you're starting new. You can invent the person that you want to be. You can explore, you can discover things about yourself. And this is such a fantastic institution with so much to offer and so much to teach you that uh, the sky's the limit. You can, you can become what you want to be. We know you're just beginning your journey here and that graduation may seem a long way off. But trust me, before you know it, you will be one of the 400,000 Badger alumni around the globe. Please turn your attention again to the video screens where your Wisconsin Alumni Association shares a glimpse of the Badger community that awaits you. The University of Wisconsin is a place of learning and discovery, a place where you'll make friends and memories that will last a lifetime. Welcome to the beginning of your journey to becoming a Badger. Say hello to Madison and a community of people who will become an important part of your life. The good news is you're joining a worldwide community of more than 400,000 Badgers that stretches from Minneapolis to Malaysia, from LA to Austria, from Sweden to the Swiss Alps. And wherever you find yourself on this journey, the Wisconsin Alumni Association will be here to help you along the way. From mentor guidance and internship opportunities, to on-campus advice and off-campus insights. Just remember, Madison is your home now. So, congratulations, because now as part of the Badger family, you will always have a seat at our table. of today's ceremony, we will invite all of you to participate in one of our time-honored traditions on campus, the singing of varsity. Many of you learned about this tradition at SOAR. More poignant than the lyrics or tune is the tr tradition of students, faculty, alumni, and supporters raising their arms and reaching out to each other as the music begins. Varsity establishes a common embrace, a shared purpose. It captures the idea that during your time at Wisconsin, when you are navigating your course schedules, making new connections, getting settled into studies and activities, that this is a campus at which students, faculty, and staff will literally and figuratively put out our arms to offer support, celebration, comfort, and congratulations. And now, help me welcome back to the stage, Rita Find, who will lead us in the singing of varsity. But wait a second. We can't do this without one more badger. There we go. And now I ask you other badgers to rise. Deans, faculty, staff, distinguished guests, please rise. session 
and then you are dismissed to attend your academic orientation this afternoon. But please don't forget to pick up your free copy of the Go Big Read book, Hill Hillbilly Elegy, on your way out. We will be standing out in the lobby passing them out. If you want to be a badger, just come along with me by the bright shining light of the light of the moon. If you want to be a badger, just come along with me by the bright shining light of the moon. By the light of the moon, by the light of the moon, by the bright shining light of the light of the moon. If you want to be a badger, just come along with me by the bright shining light of the moon. If you want to be a badger, just come along with me by the bright shining light of the light of the moon. If you want to be a badger, just come along with me by the bright shining light of the moon. By the light of the moon, by the light of the moon, by the bright shining light of the light of the moon. If you want to be a badger, just come along with me by the bright shining light of the moon.